Hello, this is Hina from Team Walat, and today we are going to discuss a very important poem, a modernist poem of 20th century, The Wasteland. Let's look at it. The poem Wasteland, published in the year 1922, is 434 lines long. Poet, you know, is T.S. Eliot, who lived from 1888 to 1965. As I told you, it is a modernist poem, and the setting is around World War I. After World War I, when the world was absolutely in a state of disparity, absolutely in a state of madness, that is what Eliot talks about. It is a dramatic monologue in which you will find many speakers, like speaker, location, time, it keeps on changing. And the wasteland is divided into five sections. Today, I shall discuss the first two sections with you. The first section is the burial of the dead, which consists of lines 1 to 76. Let's begin. Eliot declares that April is the cruelest month. Shouldn't April be a sweet month? But for Eliot, April is the cruelest month because flowers and plants grow. They do grow, but they grow out of the dead land. Remember, people are dead. World War, it has taken lives of millions of people. So these flowers and plants are growing out of dead land. That is why April is the cruelest month. Here, Eliot contradicts the opening line of Chaucer's general prologue to the Canterbury Tales, where April is celebrated. Now, after this, the speaker continues that it was winter rather than spring or summer that kept him warm. Imagine winter keeping you warm. Disillusion. Why? Because it covered up the dead land or the wasteland in snow. Then the poem shifts to some several German references. Now, what are these German references in the burial of the dead? First, we listen about court garden, which in German is called as Hofgotten. That is the garden which is in the center of Munich. Second, the speaker announces in German, he says that, no, I am not a Russian. I am Lithuanian, a proper German. And third, we hear about a lady, a countess called Mary. She recalls her childhood when she stayed with her cousin, who's the archduke, and they went sledding, okay? And in that sledding, when she was scared, the archduke cousin said that, don't worry, Mary, just hold me tight. And there she felt a sense of freedom, which she now feels is lost. There is no freedom. Winter is mentioned after this again. And then the speaker questions uncertain about the future, what grows out of this dead land? What grows out of this wasteland? Here, as you know, the speaker is referring to the devastation caused by World War I and also by a natural disaster that is the Spanish flu, which took millions of lives. Okay, now after this, listen, listen to the fragmentation happening in the poem. It will not go continuous. You will think Oh, I was listening to this. Now, where is the story moving? That is what will happen. The reader reads more German in the form of Wagner's opera titled Tristan and Isolde. Fresh the flower, fresh the wind blows towards home. My Irish child, where are you now? Now, you should know Tristan and Isolde is a story of a couple who fell in love, although Isolde was betrothed to the king. So reference of this story here in the wasteland shows the distorted, the distorted effect of this poem. Then we come to the next stanza where a woman speaks to the reader. What is this woman talking to, you know, the readers about? She remembers. Readers are us, okay? We are the readers. So next stanza, this woman remembers how her lover gave her high sins. The lover replies that when they returned from the high synth garden, he experienced a sense of emptiness. He was not sure whether this emptiness was euphoria or whether it was numbness. This lover was not even sure whether he was living or dead. He felt somewhere hanging in between. Are you understanding what's happening? The madness of world war? See, when the near and dear ones die, when life literally begins to act like a zombie, we start acting like a zombie because of so much disaster coming to us. We actually don't know whether we are living or dead. And that is what the speaker is telling us about. Then Wagner's Tristan and his soul is mentioned again, quote, Waste and empty is the sea. That is, this sea separates Tristan from his lover. 
Okay. Now again, the scene changes. We, the readers, meet a madam called as Madam Sosostris, a tarot reader who predicts the future through her tarot cards. You know, even I used to read tarot once upon a time. Now no more, but then I know about the tarot cards. So here you listen to a lot of names of the tarot cards. For example, the hanged man and also about death by water, etc., etc. Now this tarot reader called as Madam Sosostris is compared to Sibyl from the epigraph to the wasteland. So in the epigraph to the wasteland, Sibyls are discussed. Who are Sibyls? They were classical female figures who could prophesy the future, who could tell the future, just like the tarot reader, Madam Sosostris. Then we are told by this madam, fear death by water. There is a reference to Ferdinand's drowned father from Shakespeare's The Tempest. Those are pearls that were his eyes. This is such a complicated poem. You have to read a line and then you have to understand where this line is from. So this line, those are pearls that were his eyes. They are from Shakespeare's The Tempest, okay, about Ferdinand's drowned father. Now, scene will shift again where to London, most probably, where the speaker witnesses crowd of people who are just walking over the London Bridge. They have no features, no expressions on their face. They are walking like zombies. And looking at them, the speaker asks, are they dead? Or the living dead whose lives have been undone by the deaths of other people, like lo loved ones during the war? They are already dead inside. The burial of the dead, as you know, discusses how things which are dead won't lie down, but they will get up and walk again. Eliot now alludes, or alludes to Dante's Inferno here, quote, Behind it came so long a train of folk that I could never have believed death had undone so many. Please keep a count of what allusions you are hearing to Dante's Inferno and other places, Shakespeare's works, right? Now, again, again, fragmentation, change of scene. The speaker finds a person he knows. The name of this man is Stetson. The speaker shouts, hey, Stetson. He asks Stetson whether the corpse, the dead people he had planted, have begun to sprout. And the speaker claims that he and Stetson, both of them had fought at Miley. What is Miley? It was a battle which took place in 260 BC during the first Punic War between this Miley War was fought between Rome and Carthage. Now, Eliot is actually connecting the modern, the name Stetson is a modern name, which was common during World War I. And he connects this modern name with the ancient, that is the Miley War, which was fought a lot of, lot of years ago. Eliot is connecting a suggestion that nothing changes from ancient to modern. War continues to be a part of life. It continues to be a drastic part of life. Now, lines after this, lines from the White Devil, as you know, a 1612 Jacobian play by John Webster. They are, you know, shown here how they have been changed again. Listen to the original lines from the White Devil. But keep the wolf far thence, that's for two men, for with his nails he will dig them up again. Eliot changes the line how. He says, oh, keep the dog far hence, that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. Who will he dig? The dead body. See, the dog is a man's best friend. The man who is dead and has been buried can be taken out by the dog, can be dug up by the dog because dog is loyal to men. Webster's lines, original lines in which there is wolf and foe, they are about a man who was refused a proper burial in the churchyard. So Eliot's lines also refer to an unusual burial and the prospect of dead being disturbed in their graves by dogs. The last line of the burial of the dead is a quote from French poet. Please remember Charles Baudelaire. The line are, you hypocrite lecter, mon semblable, mon frere. If you know French, kindly translate it. I will tell you the, kindly read it properly. The translation I'll tell you. So the last lines of the burial of the dead is a quote from French poet Charles Baudelaire, which mean you hypocrite reader, my, li my likeness, my brother. Eliot is telling us, he's telling me and you, you hypocrites, but you're just like me. Oh God. This takes us to the second section of the wasteland. Are you feeling something listening to what I'm saying? It is so distorted. 
There is no connection. That is what the wasteland is about. The second section is a game of chess. Here, the title alludes to two plays. First, game of chess, which was played in Thomas Middleton's play, Be Women Beware Women. And second, it alludes to one of Middleton's play, which was entitled A Game at Chess. Okay, let's start. A game of chess section begins with a 30 line long description of a beautiful room in which a woman is sitting on a throne like a chair. The first lines allude to Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. Quote, the barge she sat on like a burnished throne. However, it is very annoying when we discover that the woman is not sitting on a throne, literally, she's in her toilet. She is in the lavatory because we come to know it through the odors of the perfumes which are surrounding her. Nonetheless, the room that is described, this woman's room, it is beautifully described. There's a carving of a dolphin and Philomela transforming into a nightingale. You should know the story of Philomela. Again, the allusion to Ovid's metamorphosis, where Ovid retold the story from Greek mythology. Listen to the story of Philomela. Philomela was raped by her brother-in-law, Tereus. The gods took pity on her and she was turned into a nightingale. Though she continued to accuse Tereus, jig, 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 jig. That's how, you know, she kept on speaking that sound. She was turning into a nightingale and this carving was also in this woman's room. This woman reminds the reader of Belinda from Alexander Pope's The Rape of the Lock. Her world of perfumes and makeup literally covers up her natural appearance. This woman is so false. Now, the change, change, fragmentation. The description moves to a conversation between a man and a woman, maybe the same woman whose lavatory and room was described. This woman is accusing the man of not telling her what is on his mind. The man is quiet. He always replies as cryptic in some, you know, chords. He says he thinks they are in a rat's alley. This rat's alley alludes to what? To the trenches of World War I, which were filled with rats. Then this woman asks, you know, the man what he remembers, to which he replies by quoting something. He remembers nothing. He's just quoting other people's things. So now the man quotes some Shakespeare allusion we encountered in the burial of the dead. Which words the man quotes? Those are pearls that were his eyes. On being pressed again to speak by the woman, the man replies now with a quote about Shakespeare, which is a jazz song from 1912 called Shakespearean Rag. Are you understanding what's happening here? The man's traumatic, traumatic state is discussed. His inability to talk or think about himself. He's only speaking in quotes, in cryptic messages. He has no ability to think about himself in that distorted world after World War I on which the wasteland is based, right? Now, again, the woman asks the man a question that what are they going to do or what are they ever going to do? To which the man replies with a list of routine things. He says the hot water goes on at 10. A roof over the convertible car at four, which will take them out if it's raining. A game of chess, which they will play while waiting for a knock at the door, which will never come. This knock can be from a ghost of the past or from a guest, but he does not know. The readers now are taken to a pub. <laughs> Forget the man and the woman. Now, please come to a pub. We are the readers. You're reading the wasteland. The readers are taken to a pub in the east end of London where working class women are chatting. And one of them tells about her friend, about another friend called as Lil. Listen to the story of Lil. This is very important. Lil's husband has been discharged from the army, so he will want a good time. So the speaker says that Lil should go and get some false teeth. Why? The Lil, this girl, is only 31 years old, but she already looks ancient because she took abortion pills to bring off her latest pregnancy, as already they have too many mouths to feed. Now, the barman, the scene, as I told you, is in a pub. The barman is repeatedly shouting for orders, last orders. It is time for the pub to close. And these orders are rendered in capital in the poem. And because of this, the conversation between the women is cut. However, we come to know that Lil is trapped in her marriage and also in her reproductive cycle. So what is her way out for her? Death. Speaker then tells us the question she asked Lil. What did she get? You know, why did she get married? 
if she does not want children. And this highlights the main theme of the wasteland, which is marriage, sexual relationships in this modern world. After this, the women leave the pub. They are shouting, good night, good night. This again alludes to the words Ophelia says as she leaves the stage for the last time in Shakespeare's play Hamlet. What does Ophelia say? Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night, good night. Remember Ophelia had got mad during this time and shortly after this, she will be found dead. Probably she drowned herself. What does it take us to? It tells us that a game of chess is about two women in this modern world and their unfulfill unfulfilling relationships with men. The first woman is associated with Cleopatra. The second is associated with Ophelia. Both these women, Cleopatra and Ophelia, took their own lives, remember? However, in the modern age, Iliad says that escape is not so easy. And we are done with this distorted, disillusioned poem, The Wastelands, first two sections. For next two sections, keep following us. This is Hina from Team Wallach. Take good care of yourself and kindly go exercise. You don't feel disillusioned after listening to all this. Have a great time. Bye-bye.